slavery is physical. Enslavement is mental. Bondage is spiritual. Enslave the body. Enslave the mind. And that binds the spirit. Once the spirit is bound to the illusion, to the program, to the agenda of the oppressor, the will of that spirit has been suppressed and is being controlled. It's many aspects to the way mind control works, to the way that the program and the conditioning is set in place. So even if you trap the body or slave the body, you can set that body free because if the mind is still enslaved, that body is going to do what that enslaved mind leads it to do. Because those thoughts are enslaved. So those thoughts are the thoughts of the oppressor or of the slave maker. But not of the individual. Not of that particular person. The mind is being controlled. And... If your spirit is bound and stuck to that program, to this oppressive programming system, if your spirit is bound to that, you will not have the will to break free. You will not have the will to detach. And if your mind is in captivity, you don't even know that you're enslaved. You don't even know that your spirit is bound to oppression. So you don't even know that there's a necessity to free your mind, to free your spirit. See, the way that the trick went is let them think that their body is free. Let them think that they're free to do as they choose to do with their body. But see, that's not true freedom. That's just leaving you free to be dumb, to be ignorant and unknowing. See, but controlling the mind, that's the key. That's the medium that's used to direct the body and the spirit or the will. Because spirit is energy and Energy is currency. So, if they're banking off of your currency, then it is necessary that they keep your spirit in bondage. That's keeping your energy in their bank. And to be in bondage is just that. To be bound for ages. Stocks and bonds. What does it mean to be bound? Or bond? It's a tie. Something that's tied together. It's a tethering. Or in some cases. A form of enslavement. The stock is just the position that the enslaved that the enslaved is held in so stocks and bonds are it's the position that you're held in enslaved in the level of your enslavement that is your the stock and the bond the interest and the value that they have of you in their energy bank but, again, if the mind is enslaved, the mind is in captivity, if you're the product of enslavement or mind control, you're totally unaware of what's going on 
and what you need to do to eliminate this program, to stop this agenda, and to free yourself. That's why you hear the term so often, free your mind, free your mind. Free your mind and the rest will follow. There's a lot of people suffering from many forms of mental illness. There's many ways that people mask mental illness. And mental illness is the result of these people lacking mental control or mental stability because they're the products of enslavement. Their mental belongs to something else, something outside of themselves. And that's what's controlling them. And trying to fight against that or going against that or losing identity in the process of that is driving people insane. They're forgetting who they are. Their spirit ego is in bondage. The spiritual ego, the spiritual aspect of the ego isn't driving towards higher levels of spiritual ascension, freedom, knowledge, and clarity, an open eye on the world around them. Those thoughts are being suppressed. That's the purpose of the, purpose of the bondage and the enslavement. So we can say slavery is done away, but it doesn't matter because the body is being controlled anyway. So now, there's a lack of synchronicity going on. It's an imbalance taking place. The physical isn't aligned with the mental. The mental isn't aligned with the spiritual. The physical, the mental, and the spiritual are unaligned. They're imbalanced. They're not tethered the, together they're not in synchronicity the way that they should be. It's not a flow. They're not flowing in the same direction. They're flowing in opposite direction. So it causes internal opposition. And this is what causes the break in the psyche. And this is what induces the mental illness. So. The many masks of mental illness that you see. This is a person's attempt to fight this off. They're trying to find a way to cope with their mentals and their mental faculty being infiltrated or being under attack. But if they don't necessarily know that they're being attacked, then they don't know the most effective methods to use to ward off that attack or to kill off that enemy, to kill off that attack, to be proactive and to stop that attack from even happening. They don't know what the proper defense tool or mechanism is. So the mask is something that's put on, that's worn as a way to try and escape or hide from this attack. Well, maybe if they don't recognize me, they won't be able to attack me. But in the process, this is causing people to drift further and further away from who they truly are, from their true self, from their higher self. They're becoming lost in their physical ego. They're lost in the imagination of someone else. They're lost in the creation of someone else. sometimes it's hard the further and further and the more lost that you become the more distant that you become from yourself the harder it is to get back or to find yourself because it may take the time that it take for you to drift away it took 10 years. How long do you think it's going to take to drift back before you can even start to progress forward? 
It's a lot of backtracking involved. But see, this is all about mind control. People talk about mind control and often the aspect of the mind being controlled by outside force or entity. But really, mind control is about you controlling the mind. You controlling your mind. You becoming the master mind. The master of all things. That your mind produces, creates, generates the controller of every function and every operation that is performed. This is what true mind control is. So you have to apply these terms to yourself and think about how these things can be applicable. See, this is how you take their tools and use them against them. Because the same tools that they're using to break you down, to tear you down, and to keep you in bondage and to keep you enslaved are the same tools that you can use to unbind yourself. To unslave yourself. But you have to know where to look to find these tools and you have to know how to use these tools once you find them. No, it's not as easy as it sounds. It gets pretty difficult. And for some, it's more difficult than others. But this takes practice. Once you learn what to do, and through repetition, just constant practice, this is something that is achievable. You just have to have the interest, the desire, and the will to do so. But I would suggest that you seek Search for true freedom. Don't get lost in the illusion of just being free to be dumb. Freely ignorant. Wandering around. Lost. Don't be that person. Don't allow that to happen to yourself. And if you are that person, do something about it. If you don't want to be that person. If you want change. Be the change that you want to see. The change is up to you. Look at the person in the mirror. If you're looking for a leader. Look in the mirror. If you're looking for a savior. Look in the mirror. If you're looking for a guide. Whatever you're looking for. Look in the mirror, look at yourself, because you are that. If you're looking for inspiration, look in the mirror, be an inspiration to yourself. If you're looking for motivation, look in the mirror, be a motivation to yourself. This is the essence of self-help, self-inspiration, self-motivation, because all of this comes within, from within. It starts with you. You have to be inspired and put that energy in motion. That's motivation. A person can't motivate you. You have to motivate and move on your own. Now, a person can provide inspiration, but this is coming from someone else. And they're inspiring you or sharing their spirit or their energy with you. You possess that and then you motivate to move forward or to be greater. But. You don't want to become dependent on that. You want to be able to develop this on your own. Tap into your own energy, your own inspiration, motivation, inspire and move to be greater. Before you look in the mirror, Make sure you take the mask off. Take the superficial mask off. Don't look in the mirror or attempt to look in the mirror with the superficial mask or facade. Because a lot of people hide themselves behind these superficial material masks. They mask their mental illness behind superficial and materialistic things. Items, accessories, it's 
supposedly thinking that it's going to take the pain away. So supposedly thinking that it'll just go away if I hide behind this mask, but it won't. But when you look in the mirror, look in the mirror straight face, take the mask off. That's how you start to develop self-love. Accept yourself for who you are. That's how you break the chains. It's acceptance. Accept your convictions. Accept your so-called flaws. Accept everything about yourself. Love yourself. And then all of the all of the supposedly's become definites. They're no longer maybes, they're no longer possibilities, they're definite. You gotta learn to love yourself. That's the first step to any true transformation is loving yourself, accepting yourself, building confidence in yourself, knowing your value. That's 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 starters. That's the foundation. When you have that, that will strengthen everything else that you do. But the insecurities will hinder you. They'll hold you down. They'll weigh heavy on you. Stagnate you and hinder your progression. Self-love is the key. When they talked about love. When Earth, Wind, and Fire talked about love. Love is the key. Self-love. The love for yourself. That's the key, self-love, unconditional self-love, that's true love.